President Joe Biden is asking Congress to approve another massive package of military and humanitarian aid for Ukraine's government. This as evidence of Russian war crimes in Ukraine continues to mount. But will it be enough to ensure Ukraine prevails against a brutal Russian army assault that is leveling cities and targeting civilians? And joining us now are Elizabeth Shackelford, senior fellow on U.S. foreign policy at the Chicago Council on Global Affairs. Shackelford was a career diplomat until 2017 when she resigned to protest what she's saw as the hollowing out of the State Department during the Trump administration. And Tom Ginsburg, professor of international law at the University of Chicago. Welcome both of you to uh, Chicago tonight. Tom Ginsburg, to that question of war crimes, we've all seen the video evidence seeming to mount every day, but uh, will anyone ever be held accountable for those? Right. Well, there's essentially two ways that people could be held accountable. One would be the jurisdiction of the International Criminal Court, which is reviewing these things and does have jurisdiction over war crimes committed in the Ukraine. Uh, but the other and the perhaps more likely way we would see accountability is through national courts applying something called universal jurisdiction. So we're seeing courts in Poland and investigators in Lithuania and such begin to think about prosecutions. And then, of course, there's Ukraine itself, which has said that it may have some prosecutions for war crimes committed in its territory. And Tom Ginsburg, what role does the U.N. play here, or is it is it a difficult role given the fact that the Russia is on the Security Council? Right. So for the overall conflict, Russia being on the Security Council will prevent the Security Council from acting. But there are many other parts of the U.N. system. Uh, there's a Human Rights Council, there's the General Assembly, there are other actors and, of course, resources that those actors can deploy to facilitate more accountability for these crimes. Uh, and most of that will last a very long time. That is the accountability. There's no uh, statute of limitations for many of these crimes. All right, and let's hear from U.N. Secretary General Antonio Guterres, who visited Ukraine's capital on Thursday to meet with President Volodymyr Zelensky to see the destruction wrought by Russia's invasion. And he also had this to say about the Security Council. Let me be very clear. The Security Council failed to do everything in its power to prevent and end this war. And this is a source of great disappointment, frustration and anger. Now, Elizabeth uh, Shackelford, we also mentioned that uh, President Biden uh, is asking Congress to approve this $33 billion aid package for Ukraine. It's being uh, bottled up right now. Uh, do you think it ultimately will be approved, and how impactful could this round be? I think it likely will be approved, at least uh, the vast majority of it. Right now, there's a lot of interest in Congress in doing whatever we can to help Ukraine in this situation, and it will be very important. The uh, military aid in particular is a critical part of a two-pronged strategy between the uh, sanctions regime that the United States is doing with a number of our partners, which is to prevent Russia from accessing the funds that it needs to continue perpetrating the war. And then the military assistance on the other side of that is absolutely essential to raise the cost of that war. So it's it's really relies on both. And I think that what we're seeing in terms of military assistance in particular is you know, pretty unprecedented, um, and it's going to be essential for what's likely to be a drawn-out war. And Elizabeth Shackelford, you've been very outspoken uh, about uh, your belief in the need for more resources for the State Department. Uh, we just saw a delegation led by House Speaker Nancy Pelosi in Ukraine. Uh, what is the role of diplomacy here uh, in, in assisting Ukraine in, in coming uh, to a final resolution of this con conflict? Well, there are a number of different areas that diplomacy is going to be important right now, uh, probably the least of which is going to be direct diplomacy between the United States and Russia. I mean, that's a place where the United States simply doesn't have the leverage that some other players do. But, um, for example, what the United States has been doing since all the way back in the fall has been working very closely with our European allies and other allies around the world in order to build this united front. Once the invasion began, there was a very solid front from the West in particular, to target Russia with really uh, damaging sanctions. And that's just continued um, along the way, building up and calibrating with our partners, which has been essential. The United States can't do this on our own. Um, but there are also some other avenues that we can work on uh, through diplomacy, such as looking at the players who have more influence on Russia, who might be able to give them some economic relief from the sanctions regime that we have in place and working with them to see what we can do to bring them over to our side. Because the more countries that you have that are shutting Russia off from economic resources, the harder it's going to be for Russia to continue. Tom Ginsburg, getting back to this question of war crimes, you mentioned all the different routes that, that uh, prosecution could take. Uh, are we just looking at uh, 
uh, soldiers, uh, commanders, generals, or how high up the uh, food chain uh, could this go all the way up to Vladimir Putin himself? Right. So there's individual uh, war crimes being committed by soldiers, and there certainly could be accountability for that. But then there's also an international law doctrine called command responsibility, where a commander who knows that these uh, events were likely to occur could also be held, I guess, vicariously liable for those actions. And that dates back to World War II and I think would be appropriate in this case, given that this seems to be part of the training of the Russian army to act in these brutal ways. Putin himself is tougher. There's head of state immunity right now that he enjoys. And unless he was to become a former head of state, you know, that would obviously keep other countries from exercising jurisdiction over him. It's also um, unclear if he could be held accountable for the ultimate crime here, which is the crime of aggression that is launching this war in the first place is a crime in international law. And it would seem to be that he'd be the person responsible, but it's not clear what forum exists to actually try him for that. So, so, so that might be an unlikely outcome here. Elizabeth Shackelford, we're seeing reports now citing U.S. intelligence that says Russia in the coming days wants to annex uh, uh, larger portions of, of eastern Ukraine. Uh, do you think they'll be successful in doing that, or can Ukraine and, and their allied forces hold that off? Well, what we've been seeing in recent days is, you know, there have been incursions, and then the Russians have been pushed back again. So. Um, it's really hard to get a sense of what their capacity on the ground is to really hold more territory than what they have right now. The military situation is um, is is not going according to plan for Putin's army. So um, I imagine that they can do a lot of damage. They have a lot of uh, a lot of artillery, a lot of a lot of ammunition, and they do have quite a number of troops. But the different it's a very different question to ask whether or not they can hold it. And then if they can hold it for some time, how long is that? I mean, the ultimate end game for Russia right now is to control more of this territory, and we've seen a tremendous amount of resistance by uh, the Ukrainian people. So I think it's going to be, you know, the question is, time is on whose side in this scenario. And um, I think they're going to be able to do plenty of damage. And uh, unless they're able to negotiate a resolution, though, I don't see how long Russia is going to be able to you know, kind of hold territory um, in the in the long run. So it, it certainly seems like a quagmire uh, for the foreseeable future here for both sides. Uh, and our thanks to Elizabeth Shackelford and Tom Ginsburg for joining us. Thank you so much.